I recently reviewed the Robinson R66. It's a light turbine five seat helicopter and people ask, well, can you review its number one competitor, the Bell 505 Jet Ranger X? Yes, I can. But first, information explosion. I'm flying today with Tim from Bell Helicopters in the back, Abigail and Matthew. Wave everybody, we're all masked and ready to go fly. I want to thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eye Sunglasses. I only wear Flying Eye Sunglasses in the helicopter, which as of when I'm making this ad is currently down for repairs. No problem. I also wear Flying Eyes during my normal life. Why? The lenses are shatterproof polycarbonate and they block 100% of UV light. See, no UV. The temples are one millimeter thin and you can do this. Makes them very hard to break. Thin frames make it super easy to put flying eyes on while you're wearing a helmet. And not just motorcycle helmets too. Vikings, astronauts, I'm talking to you. The frames are also super lightweight. It's almost like I'm wearing nothing at all. Flying eyes come in a range of styles that fit all kinds of faces, including this mug. Didn't break. Use the promo code MICA for 10% off. There's a link in the description. Flying eyes. Smooth. When you're ready, we're going to start a timer. I'm going to get a clear call, and then you're just going to push and rotate. Clear. Now let go. We're going to monitor it. We have a start. Start triangle. Temperature is rising. Oil pressure is rising. Blades are turning. Is there anything I have to be ready to turn off at a moment's so, notice? If it was gonna hot start on us, the FedEx should catch it. Yeah. If the FedEx doesn't catch it, the pilot always has the ability to push in and abort to start themselves. Gotcha. All right, start sequence is complete. I'm gonna turn the generator on. We've picked up a load. Now I'm going to... When you're ready, you can move the throttle from idle to fly. <laughs> it's so weird having a toggle there. Just a little switch. Low rotor's gonna come on at 85%, go off at 95%. So we are at flight RPM. I'm gonna test the pitot heater. Not that you need it here, but we picked up a load and the cast message, pitot heat's gonna turn off. I'm gonna turn the hydraulic system off. We're gonna do a cross pattern or an X pattern to the front right or front left, back left, right. Exact opposite. And then I'm going to move the collective and down. Hydraulic system is going to come back on. There is no hydraulic assist on the pedals. So you said straight to tower. We do have information, cool, or a tango, and we're ready to go. Any pro tips here? Uh, disregard, runway go slow. Okay. Sounds right. Two mic, mic. Beautiful. Traffic on base, runway 26 left will proceed you through the intersection. Charity. So I'm used to um, non-hydraulic. My instrument has like completely manual controls. So there's always this little like light ballet where I kind of get my head around the controls. That's feeling pretty good though. Yeah. Columbia Shower Helicopter 505 Uniform Tango, Ross Aviation Request West World Departure with Tango. Number 505 Uniform Tango, Long Beach Tower, West World is approved departure from Ross Aviation Request. When you're ready, you can have the flight controls. You have all the flight controls. I have all the flight controls. You have all the flight controls. All right, we are airborne. Let's get things started. Interior. Tell me a little bit about the cockpit. 
rather than using a bulkhead to attach the transmission to the airframe, we're using a truss assembly that ties into a keel beam apparatus that goes underneath us. It removes the need for the bulkheads, so you've got good visibility from the back seats to the front. In the back, we have stadium seating, so they're about eight inches higher than the people in the front, so their view is, believe it or not, better than our view up here. And then we have uninterrupted view along the side, not the front. I noticed in the rear, the seats are pretty darn vertical. They are. Um, although I, I was thinking that's kind of how my mom would want me to sit anyway, so maybe uh, that's a good thing. But uh, just from a, a comfort perspective, at least the short time I've been in the uh, the seat here, this feels really good. How is it? I mean, you guys flew in from Texas. How was seat comfort? It's fine. I mean, there's no fatigue based on the cockpit. Uh, it's ergonomic. The air conditioning works great. I feel like every five, you front tango. Uh, we're Port Firm and West Long Shoreline 800. Point Cessna, Angel's Gate, 1000, maneuvering. Got him. One of the things I really like about the layout is the cargo hold. There is so much space back there. You guys have so much stuff. It looked like a clown car just pulling things out and it just kind of kept coming. There's, uh, what, 18 cubic feet if we're using uh, automotive standards. When we showed up back in Long Beach, we had a set of ground handling wheels, all of our consumables for a two-week trip, meaning oils and, and rags and cleaning materials. We had three suitcases and my backpack in the baggage compartment. So plenty of space, which leaves the cabin open for terrain, terrain. people without a whole bunch of, of gear. Yeah, the view is spectacular. So we're flying along the uh, the southern coast, um, kind of past uh, San, San Pedro here, and the visibility is outstanding. You guys said on the way in you saw like a bunch of dolphins. At least 200 moving just on the uh, west of this coastline. This field of view is, is really wonderful. I love that. I mentioned earlier, the lack of a bulkhead means my wife, if she was flying up front here, could easily attend to my daughter. This past through makes it really easy to get snacks back there because heaven knows we can't go more than three minutes without sending her some goldfish so that's a really uh, great feature um, and I think too the expandability you know you've got um, room for three people wide back there you could and you can also remove all three of those seats in a matter of maybe five minutes and you could put a couple of mountain bikes in there and fly up to Big Bear and uh, land and use the bikes uh, overall I think the, uh, the 505 Jet Ranger X is very family friendly Have you subscribed to Mike and Flies? If you haven't, please do. At 100,000 subs, I'm going to review a windowless white van. Style! <laughs>My first flight was in a uh, Bell Jet Ranger, the olden times, and so I have a natural affinity for it. So to me, it feels like the classic Jet Ranger, but contemporized. But the other thing that jumped out to me, and uh, this one is not a good example, but there's a really vivid color palette. Yeah, all the paints and all the yep. interiors are customizable, so if, if you can come up with it, Bell can, can work it out for you. I think the Jet Ranger X looks pretty cool. What do you guys think? Tell us in the comments section. If you want to see what I'm driving or flying between YouTube videos, go ahead and follow me over on Instagram, In Motion. The thing that I'm noticing first off is that this is a very smooth ride. Uh, Two-bladed helicopters, that's not really what they're known for. How is this over a long flight from a uh, just a, a ride comfort perspective? It is. It's fine. You don't feel the, that added fatigue from a, a heavy vibration. You don't. Uh, it, climate control is just fine in here. I have no issues flying it uh, cross country, and I've managed to fly it internationally across continents. I think my longest cross country is about 2,800 miles, and over a several day period. But the fatigue did not set in. What's nice is that in cruise here, I'm kind of not doing anything. It just sort of, it sets and it cruises. It's very stable. Uh, and then light efforts, easy turning. It feels great, man. And also, you know, the big challenge, obviously, like when you get to an unfamiliar helicopter is uh, establishing a stable hover. And uh, it wasn't my most beautiful hover, but it could have been much, much worse. I feel like I acclimated to it very quickly, which was, uh, which was a nice feeling. I mean, obviously, one thing that's odd for me is not having any... Um, throttle here. But so rather than a traditional throttle, we use an electrical switch. It's it's a fail-safe, so you use electrical power to hold it idle. Any kind of an electrical failure in the aircraft would make cane fly RPM, whether you're on the ground or in flight. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes a second to get used to it, but really, it's no different than having twist grip throttle. Yeah. And you'll see that when we do the uh, practice auto rotation on the way back, that the throttle is going to behave just, just like normal. 
Let's talk about speed. So you guys are covering distance in this thing. Uh, what's comfortable cruise in the uh, 505? Really comfortable is about 115, okay. 120. It's comfortable for a long day's flight. You get closer to V&E, uh, which is recalculated by the Garmin's based on the altitude that you're at. Today it's 125 down here. I'm going to uh, do a, a turn to the left here. And actually, you know what? Normally I stay very close to the shoreline, but I'm going to make it a wider turn because we've got floats. Is that okay? Right, it's fine. You, Tim, have had a ton of interesting flying experience. You've uh, flown in some odd locations. Um, tell us about power, specifically like uh, how this performs at altitude. So derated for the transmission, you've got 475 shaft horsepower available to you at max power. Max continuous 428 shaft horsepower. For 3,680 pound helicopter, that's that's pretty good. Highest that I've tested the Bell 505 is in Nepal, landing at the Annapurna base camp. And the day that we landed there, 16,500 DA, Ooh. landed there with five people on board. Really? And we were able to depart. So I didn't have a problem with power. And uh, I think if you can fly it in Nepal, <laughs> definitely fly it in the U.S. Yeah, Long Beach isn't going to be a problem. Were you a little nervous, though? Oh, of course. Good, good, good. That's the right answer. <laughs> what about tail rotor authority? Tail rotor authority is great, and the dual channel FedEx, um is really where we'll start with that conversation. It's not going to let you droop the rotor system. So typically, you know, a pilot droops a rotor system, droops the tail rotor, and finds themselves in a loss of tail rotor effect in this situation. But the FedEx is going to keep up with that. It's going to manage the rotor, maintain it at 104. I'm going to interrupt you. Dolphins. There you go. There's that pod again. Man, <laughs> I, I'm going to do a little lap around here. Abigail, feel free to, uh, to get some, uh, some footage of that, because that is amazing. <laughs> this is why we have floats. Look at that. Wow. It's pretty amazing. That's so cool. Probably these are the, a couple hundred of them. Yeah, these are the things you can do if you have a helicopter. Isn't that the best? <laughs> I wish I wasn't wearing a mask so you could see the smile. <laughs> From a casual uh, perspective of somebody who's been flying for maybe 15 minutes, this seems like a really great package, especially for private use. That's really like my my thoughts. It's not like I'm going to go do work with this. Like, what is the helicopter that I want to live with? And this feels great. This is a really nice package. All right, I'm having a good flight. I'm going to go look at some more dolphins. Emotion factor. Let's talk about the emotion factor of the 505 Jet Ranger X. For me, what's so uh, compelling about the Jet Ranger X is that it harkens back to that first helicopter I ever laid my hands on the controls of, but then it's been you know, sort of beautifully modernized. And it's something that you hit on too, is that when people think about what will flying a helicopter be like, they think of like looking at dolphins and the freedom of flight and being out and seeing things you would never get to see, but you don't often, when you're living that dream, or when you're thinking about that dream, you don't think about like, uh, what's all the, um, the mental work I have to do to make sure I do that safely? So one of the things that I'm thinking about is the fact that there's a lot happening automatically that I don't have to consider, which frees me up to enjoy the experience. Do you think that's a reasonable? I think that's a reasonable assessment. It's, it's designed with that in mind. Whether you're doing flying for pleasure or for work, your business is outside of the cockpit, not inside the cockpit. 1,000 angel feet. If you're inside the cockpit, then you get involved with obstacles, you get involved with birds. Keeping your head out, all the information's available to us here. If we were never, if you had never flown here in Southern California before, and you knew you were coming up to the airport, all the information's stored inside the Garmin. And I can bring up all of the the radio frequencies, information about the airport, the airfield diagram, all populates for me. If that's where we were going, I could say direct enter, enter, and I can assign an altitude to this, and you could fly the synthetic vision from where you're at to where you're going. Fly an instrument approach using that same synthetic vision. So it again makes it easier for you to stay and, uh, oriented and stay outside the of the plane, cockpit and not uh, messing with an iPad or with traditional paper maps. It's all right here for you. If you're interested and moved emotionally to buy a Jet Ranger X of your own, check the link in the description below. Let's talk remarks.
let's really quickly hit on the avionics because this glass cockpit uh, setup, I mean, you've already hit on a few of the details here, but this makes it so easy. I'm really used to the kind of classic steam gauges, but this is really cool. Everything within the aircraft is integrated through the garments, whether it's the engine information page, whether it's the map functions, the weight and balance functions, the fault monitoring, auxiliary pages can tell me the DA for the day, for instance. I know that it's 2114 right now without doing any other calculations, which is good information to know, especially if you're up flying in the mountains. You've also got every airport on Earth, every VOR, NDB, visual reference point is stored within the system. You can build your own routes with up to 2,000 user-defined waypoints. We talked about re the reconfigurability of the cabin, how you can pull those seats, and if you want to like haul cargo. In flying the R66, um, I enjoyed flying it, but the flexibility of the interior here, I think, would probably push me in the Jet Ranger X direction, just because I love that flexibility. It's like an SUV. You know, you want to be able to put the seats down and like go to Home Depot and uh, get a... Uh, uh, <laughs> A cargo load full of mulch. Not that you're going to be hauling mulch in your 505, but you could if you wanted to. I suppose you could. So uh, Robinson has a 12-year uh, overhaul philosophy. You know, you kind of basically rebuild the whole bird. How does it work with the 505? So it's based on a maintenance steering group that was designed based on a, a panel of, of industry professionals and private owners that designed it around functionality. So you inspect one portion of the aircraft at a time, so you only go into one area and then you move on to the next. We mentioned uh, earlier, but there's a high level of customization. So if you wanted to buy yourself a uh, 505, you can make it any color you want. You can outfit the interior however you want. There's like a, a, a ton of flexibility. That uh, customization is nice. Please do me a favor, get it in an outrageous color. I like seeing purple 505s flying around. You got one in Fort Worth. Good, very good. There is a noticeable lack of um, uh, fuses. All of the stuff? electrical fuses are stored in the back um, in the avionics bay, so we no longer reset circuit breakers. If we can't mitigate the problem with the Garmin system, we're not going to be able to do it in flight. So basically, if something goes wrong, just land. Absolutely. <laughs> that seems pretty easy. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to demonstrate an auto, and I'm going to let Tim take the controls because he knows what he's doing. All right, so auto rotation with a turn be a power recovery. So as we cross Angel's Gate, three, two, one, here's your auto rotation. Engine out, collective comes down. Gonna turn back. Rotor comes back. Steady state auto rotation into the wind. Any, any particular speed you're looking for? 65 knots. Okay. Coming together. We're climbing out. So, very benign auto rotation, mm -hmm. very easy. Notice that the throttle, as soon as you go from idle to fly, it recovers immediately. <laughs> very good glide. Switch flipping thing is so strange to me. I feel like, you know what I need to do? I just need to hang out with you guys more. I'm, you I'm coming back to Texas with y'all. I hope that's okay. Come on back. If there are any remarks that I've overlooked about the uh, 505 Jet Ranger X, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis. In synopsizing the 505 Jet Ranger X, it's a reimagined classic that is reconfigurable and comes in a ton of fun colors. To me, the Jet Ranger X is the renewed 2021 Ford Bronco of light helicopters. There you go. You took a classic, you made it fun, you made it modern, a lot of capability. Tim, thank you for flying with me. Absolutely. Abigail and Matthew, thank, thank you for you. being so quiet and patient as I flew <laughs> you guys around. Do you know how, how has it been back there? Good flight, good flight? It's been absolutely it's awesome, thank you. Yay, good flight. Thanks uh, for shallowing us around. You go, oh, oh, before oh, you, you go, one more let time. me take the flight controls. Okay, your controls. And take your, my flight controls. Take your headset off and just notice how quiet it is in the cockpit. Oh. We could. Huh. We could pretty much talk. Huh? If we had to. That's so we weird. Yeah, I cannot do that in the Enstrom. <laughs> My it's, ears would be bleeding. There'd be blood shooting out laterally. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. It's another benefit of pushing that transmission further back. You don't have those gears spinning right above your head. Sound is such a huge component in fatigue. That is a really, really neat detail. I'm glad you threw that one in there. there. Guys, I think that was a really successful flight of the uh, 505 Jet Ranger X. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.